<laughs> Welcome, this is the Red Hook Town Board meeting of October 23rd. Would you kindly join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, and uh, Steve, for the folks at home, we have on the screen our uh, revised agenda for this evening. If you'd be kind enough to pan over there. We're going to skip over uh, item number five, and we may tackle that later in the evening. Okay, very good. Well, uh, this is actually our first uh, full meeting for October, so we are going to do our supervisor's report. <coughs> this is a report of financial condition. Well, it looks like it didn't make it to the screen, unfortunately, but I will, I will read to you. The highlights, this is for the period ending September 30th, 2019. We started with a balance of eight million. <coughs> $60,928.93. We had receipts of $649,628. Disbursements of $840,000. Sorry, $834,963. For a balance of and you have in your packets the uh, variance reports. A couple of uh, budget adjustments, not many, proposed. And Harry, you have your uh, statement for the Community Preservation yeah, Fund, which now stands just shy of $1.5 million. The, the part, that, the part that's, in, that's invested is, does it, it doesn't show in this report, does it? Uh, yes, that's all the New York class stuff. Oh, that's where the other half of it is? Mm -hmm. okay. That's where a lot of the excess is. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. You see the community preservation. I would just like to. Yeah. If you're done, are you done with the CPF stuff? Looking at that? Uh, the CPF, yeah. Okay. And we've got a couple of uh, budget adjustments as yeah. well. On the budget adjustment, yep. I just want to mention um, some good news that I don't think we mentioned before that um, one of the adjustments is a, a grant we got from the DEC toward the costs associated with our e waste collection. Yep. Um, every year, the town does charge a small fee, depending on what you're bringing, but we underwrite a lot of the costs. And of course, there's a lot of costs that are covered by volunteers. Um, and the highway department does a lot of work to do it in the CAC, but um, that money from the state really helps and shows that there's an incentive to, to do the right thing with your e-waste. So we're appreciative of that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for uh, helping get us get that grant. Okay, are there any questions about the uh, remaining other couple of budget adjustments that are proposed? If not, I entertain a motion to accept the supervisor's report. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We also have a town clerk's report. Sue? Do you want to include the budgets in that? Uh, yes, please. Yes, in that motion. Thank you. <coughs> town clerk monthly report for September 2019. Total local shares remitted to supervisor as town revenue, $1,590.47. Amount paid to New York, New York Ag and Markets for their spade and neuter program, $61. 
amount remitted to New York Department of Health for marriage licenses, $225. Amount remitted to New York State Environmental Conservation, $4,249.28. For a total state and local revenue of $6,125.75. Pursuant to section 27 sub one, of, sub 1 of the town law, I hereby certify that the foregoing is a full and true statement of all fees and money received by me, Sue McCann, town clerk, and connected with my office. I also, Ann Conway gave me two abstracts to read tonight. Okay. So the first abstract is for July, and it is vouchers. Um, 25135 to 25280. The total abstract was $182,376.72. And I certify that the vouchers numbered, um, as stated above, was processed in the month of July. And there an accurate reporting of the abstracts approved for payment by the town board. The next one is August 2009. Uh, voucher number 25280 through 25399. These were processed in the month of August for a total abstract of $223,698.91. And that's uh, the abstracts that were approved for payment by the town board. And one other thing I just want to mention I've been getting quite a few phone calls lately from residents. Um, getting very suspicious phone calls. Uh, one of the big ones is people calling, t telling them that their Social Security card and number has been compromised. And um, it's been happening a lot. I'm getting a lot of phone calls. So I just want to make everybody aware that there are a lot of scams going on. And uh, don't get, give out any information on the phone. Yeah. yeah, I just received one the other day about my electric bill. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of those calls that are being generated as well. So thank you for mentioning that. So uh, for folks at home, typically uh, your utility does not call you to uh, request information. So you should always uh, try to get a number and then find out more information before you, uh, you know, divulge anything. So better safe than sorry. So thanks for bringing that up. So. Okay, uh, tonight uh, for announcements, we have a few announcements. The first one um, is a, a, a very nice announcement. Um, at our next meeting, we'll be honoring him, but we want to let you know that uh, our uh, town justice, Jonah Trebosser, was um, elected the president of the New York State Magistrates Association. We have a, a proclamation uh, that we've prepared to acknowledge his accomplishment, and we want to wish him the best. 2020 and in those endeavors. So that's the first announcement. Um, uh, new in New York, um, it's election time for uh, some of us and for all of you at home. And, and we certainly encourage you to participate in uh, choosing who uh, are making the important decisions for your community. Um, new this year is early voting. So there are nine days um, at which uh, Residents can attend uh, any one of five sites throughout Dutchess County. And as you know, elections here in New York State are administered by their counties. And so the closest site for us is Rhinebeck Town Hall. It's not that you would need to go to that one. It's just the, the nearest one. Um, nine days, and here are the nine days that um, are available for you uh, to choose from. So it's not like normal voting where you have your one spot you're supposed to go in only on these particular days, early voting. That's correct. You could actually go to any of those five sites. Is That's that right? Exactly right. Any one of those five sites will take you and you can vote. And I believe you'll be voting um, on a tablet, yeah. if I'm but, not mistaken. But you yeah. couldn't go to a different county because, no. right, it's got to be in Duchess. It's got to be in okay. Duchess, exactly right. Yeah. And these are the dates and times. and. We have this up on our website, I believe, um, and I'll double check that and make sure. Uh, you can go to redhook.org, and obviously, uh, Dutchess County Board of Elections will have uh, that information as well. So that's early voting. Um, the other announcements I have for this evening are a community action partnership of Dutchess County. 
uh, wants folks to know that once again they are uh, administering their Hudson Valley Cash Coalition, which is uh, an ARP uh, Foundation uh, sponsored aid for uh, folks to uh, file their tax preparation forms, uh, so on and so forth. You can go up to, if you can go online to hv-cash.org and we'll have some flyers here also at Town Hall um, and you can find out how you can go about getting assistance uh, filing for your taxes. Um, another program that uh, Community Action, which by the way is on East Market Street, I believe it's 31 East Market Street, here in the village of Red Hook. Um, it is a terrific place for folks to stop in and find out uh, all about programs that may be of assistance to you. Uh, one of the other programs is Dress for Success, and uh, that is a program that uh, helps to enable folks to uh, be more prepared for uh, interviewing and to getting jobs into the workforce. And they have a, a sale um, where they uh, sell clothes at a discount. Um, this year it's Friday, November 8th, and Saturday, November 9th from 12 to 5, also Monday. Um, it says the 11th year. It's on South Road, Route 9, in Poughkeepsie, New York, between the Dunkin' Donuts and the Post Office. And uh, that's something folks may uh, want to take advantage of as well. And obviously, uh, Election Day is coming up Tuesday, November 5th. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. at your normal uh, voting uh, locations. Um, the following uh, weekend, we want to remind you that once again, the uh, VFW will be conducting its uh, very um, uh, meaningful and important uh, ceremony for Veterans Day. Um, that's November 11th, 6 p.m. at Memorial Park uh, in Red Hook, and they invite folks uh, back to the VFW to join in some light refreshments. So, um, all of these announcements will be uh, on our website uh, starting tomorrow. Any other announcements, uh, folks? Okay. If not, uh, we're a few minutes late for our public hearing on uh, St. Sylvia's and Sue. Um, I won't ask you to read the whole notice, just if you would acknowledge that it was, in fact, published it was. in the paper of record. It was. Okay. And posted and put on the website. Okay, very good. Um, well, again, uh, to reiterate, um, the, the town of uh, Red Hook has been in exclusive negotiations with the Archdiocese of New York on the disposition of the sale of the former St. Sylvia St. Sylvia's properties, and um, uh, during the course of that time, uh, the town was asked whether or not it would consider any form of public-private partnership um, in order to uh, effectuate a transaction and achieve the uh, public purpose goals of having the church uh, open to the community. And um, the village of Tivoli has been sort of leading the way in discussions and uh, negotiations with a particular party. And it does look like, in fact, um, that we uh, will be supporting um, a purchase of the uh, St. Sylvia's properties uh, by a family in Tivoli um, to uh, renovate and restore and repair the properties and open it for a community center and cultural arts center. Um, the properties will be put into a not-for-profit um, with the goals of accomplishing just that. We are in sort of what we would call the final stages of uh, negotiating that out. Um, we will not withdraw our offer to uh, purchase the properties until such time as there's been sort of a, a final execution of uh, the specifics related to those documents. But suffice it to say, to say that all the parties feel uh, very excited about uh, the possibility of um, having those properties remain permanently uh, available to the community uh, at large. So that is the uh, latest update uh, with that said, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would anybody like to uh, make any comments on that? Yes. Linda? 
according to the minutes, um, the property will be on the tax roll. However, if they're going for a nonprofit status, will it be on the tax roll? Well, we don't. We can't. We can't control exactly um, what gets put into the not-for-profit, whether or not the properties are acquired by a not-for-profit or be operated by a not-for-profit. Um, but uh, I understand your question. I, I don't have an answer okay. for you just yet. And the other thing, will the so-called Tivoli family be made public so that we know who it is that's purchasing this? Um, yes, uh, it will be. And in fact, I'm happy to tell you now that the family is the Martin family, Bryce okay. and Helen Martin who are uh, well-known and, and well-respected community members in Tivoli. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Can you be a time, like, at what point will more details about the public partnership, public-private partnership be available? Like, when, you know, I'm assuming a lot of people will have, will want to know more. Yeah. Do you know? I, I, I think once uh, these agreements are, um, you know, almost finalized, I think that, uh, uh, you know, they'll be available to the public. Uh, the conversations are happening, a lot of it, with the, the village uh, mayor and trustees, uh, because understandably uh, it's a property that is, um, you know, key to that village and, and nexus to uh, um, you know, village hall there. So as soon as we have more details, uh, we'll provide that. And again, um, you know, there has been there is no agreement at this time, but we are feeling uh, rather comfortable that we, we will get there to have that agreement. So, okay. Uh, any other uh, comments uh, for the public hearing? If not, um, after months of having this, uh, you know, uh, public hearing extended, and uh, with the fact that we've had such good discussions with the uh, archdiocese, um, Father Pat. Um, the folks in, in Tivoli, uh, lots of public input at this time. I would like to make a motion that we close the public hearing. Is there a second for that? Second. Okay. And we are not going to take any action on the subject matter that was the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Aye. Item number one is a resolution to award for the replacement our, of our HBA uh, public comment? Oh, I'm sorry, public comment. Linda. <laughs> Jill. Okay. I visited the playground today, yeah. and I noticed that the Sway Fun equipment had a little block at the bottom, which is supposed to help with the tow guard. However, it doesn't comply because it came up to my finger, which is two inches. It's supposed to be a half inch or less, so it needs to be filled in. Okay. Also, you need some grab bars on the outside which extend a foot beyond those poles because you can't get yourself in there. I checked out the swings. They, the, uh, under it was filled in somewhat. You can see that some kids used it again. But I think he's supposed to have pads going over those. So if you know when the pads are going in. The pads go under the wood chips. Oh, okay. I think they've raised the pads. And just uh, to follow up, there will be another load of chips going in there. They okay. just haven't arrived yet. You still need the accessible route. Yes. Well, yeah, you'll yes. know that because there's a lot of painting that's going to be happening. Yeah, there's a lot so of painting. Okay. It's just a lot to That's what there. was on the original plan, all which yeah, I'm actually okay when I saw it, but then in reality it wasn't there. No, cool. all the paving's being done at once, whether we made that okay. clear. It's right. not, we're not doing a piecemeal. No, it's I understand that. that as long as it occurs. Yeah. And the other thing, you have not done anything about the Greg Farm Barn. Uh, as far as accessibility for the handicapped, so I was forced to do the next step. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Jill, would you like to make some comments? Yeah, this is the first time I'm making a comment. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I guess in keeping in spirit with the playground, um, there are signs at the park that say, for the safety and comfort of every park user, dogs must be leashed at all times and clean up after your pet. 
Um, since May, um, I'll try to keep it brief. Walking there multiple times a day can get a little stressful because people make the choice to, uh, to go to the playground and not have their dogs leash. And the dogs can sometimes be aggressive, and by that I mean uh, charging at you, you know, growling, barking, you know, maybe you see some pearly whites now and then. Uh, sometimes I have a dog with me, uh, sometimes I don't. If I do, mine is always leashed. Um, I've witnessed other altercations between people, and yesterday just, just had me upset and angry, and I thought, well, okay, I have to do something about it. I just can't complain. I'm going to come to a meeting. But I didn't know if you could answer, did, did the... Did the, does Chapter 63, what is it, Article 9J about leash law apply for the town? Does that apply also to the rec park? Yes, it does. Is there any way, I, I got to thinking that signage could be changed there to, to list the town ordinance and, and what the fines uh, would be, uh, as well as the animal control officer's number that people could call when that happens? Because I couldn't find anything on the town website. That was another thing that I wanted to ask. You know, when I searched in the departments, you know, I couldn't find anything. And from what I understand, it's through the SPCA. Mm -hmm. And what I found out shortly before I came here was Stephanie, is it Fitzpatrick? She's one of the officers. Yeah. Um, and I actually spoke to her before I came in, and she said she would send more officers uh, to patrol that area. But I don't know, like, what can be done, or, or what are your thoughts? Do other people bring this up to you? They do. Yeah. They do. Um, and I thought we were getting a little better compliance with it, but it doesn't no. sound like we are. No, and, and, um, and probably I see it more because I'm there at least once a day, often twice. So when, the more you go, the more you're going to yeah, see it. Yeah. yeah, we were having problems with people also allowing the dogs in the playground itself. And so oh, that was yesterday. That's where the see, altercation you know, We put up was. signs you know, around the playground telling mm -hmm. people you can't bring your dog on those wood chips. So that's frustrating. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, some people will say, well, my dog is friendly, you know, he's a baby, but an unleashed dog is an uncontrolled dog, which has the potential, you know, in a second to become an unsafe dog. So um, I just wanted to express that concern. Yeah. Um, and anything you could do with signage, maybe that would help, yeah. along with posting a phone number for people to call. Because if people could be start getting written tickets, because it says that you can be fined up to no more than $250 for violating anything in there, or tickets issued. Like, can you comment, you know, the past year, how many tickets are issued? I don't believe tickets have been issued, so I think it's something. Yeah, uh, Sarah does. But I don't, yeah, I don't know about that. Do you, I don't think any tickets, as far as I know. But I don't know if people know who to call. Like, if yeah. you're there in the moment, if, you, if the number was there, yeah, you're probably maybe like, you have, the, have to have the ability to change the number, and you had that on the signage, maybe things could get better for people and yeah, people would feel more safe. So who's right. authorized to do the tickets? The dog control officer. Which it would be the ASPCA. Yeah. 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 So, right. you, I mean, you'd have, the problem is with them being in Poughkeepsie or, or you know, Hyde Park, you'd have to call and then to get there. Hope that, right, hope that they get there in time to, but it's something in it, maybe if the same description of a dog keeps coming, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, it can't hurt, and it, mm -hmm. would cert it might help. And also, I know she's kind of going all around the area, so if she was... Well, she mentioned nearby, officers, she so I don't know if there's other there people may be under multiple. her. Yeah, right. um, I mean, the contract is with yes, the whole SPCA, uh, so there and, may be And more. I just uh, was looking at her name, I apologize, but yeah, there's somebody who's assigned to Red Hook Prime. Okay, good. Right. So, if you consider uh, changing signage and adding a phone number. Yeah, well, it sounds like we need to have enforcement. Mm -hmm. That too. Yeah. I mean, we have like records of how many loose dogs have been reported in and found, but not, as far as I know, no tickets have been issued. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I'll make sure the website has, well, maybe has add dog control to the contact list because it looks like, because, I think because they're not an employee, they, they were not. <laughs> But they probably should be because that's where people will go to yeah. look for the number. So I'll make sure that gets I know they change that officer from time to time, but we can keep We on can just say dog that. control officer and not have a name and right. then have the number, and then that will take care of that. Okay. Yep. Uh, any other public comments? Okay. Uh, we have, for our first item, 
We are replacing our HVAC, our rather outdated and inefficient HVAC equipment. Uh, part of the funding comes from the $100,000 award that we were given for being only the fourth township to be uh, declared a clean energy community. And so uh, part of the funding uh, comes from that grant. Uh, we went out to bid um, for this equipment and we had our lowest responsible bidder, and that is uh, Family Dan's Mechanical. And they will be installing three new units in the various parts of the building. And we will have remote access um, and monitoring of the system, so we'll be alerted if there's a problem with the system and we're not here. Is terrific. And so we have a resolution. Um, that resolution would be number 101. 101. Dated October 23rd. It's authorizing the contract award for the replacement of HVAC equipment at the town of Red Hook Town Hall project. And it is for a total contract price of 46638 and it's family bands mechanical. And I so move. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, our resolution number 102. So I have a little uh, good news, um, which I shared with the seniors over at the community center, which is um, that our um, state funding to match the federal grant that we had for the two electric vans to take uh, both our seniors and those with uh, you know physical challenges a wheelchair lift accessible uh, van two of them uh, all electric so we got the federal grant and then the state pool of matching money went away but now it's back and so we've gone out done a mini bid through a state contract for those two vans, <coughs> results of which will be back November 13th. And so we are uh, doing what we said we would do, which is get more charging stations in anticipation of that. And the state has opened up more money to uh, reimburse us for the, those constructions as well. And so we uh, went out and got estimates or did a RFP on that one. Um, and the bidder for that is plugging in stations online. It's for more uh, charging. Uh, the software that's required as part of the Charge Ready program is included, and the funding comes from the state, um, and any remainder will go to, uh, from our Clean Energy Communities $100,000 grant award. And so that's 102, authorizing the Town of Red Hook to award a contract for electric vehicle charging stations at the Town of Red Hook Town Hall parking lot. And I so move. They're going to be right next to the ones that are there. They are going to be just opposite. Thank you for asking for clarification. They're going to be just opposite those four spots. Second. So there'll be a total of four. There'll be a total of four opposite the total of four that we have now. There'll be a total of eight altogether. There's a second. Is there further discussion? If not, all uh, if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, we have a resolution authorizing the execution of a revised IMA regarding the flail mower head. We've been talking about this for some time. Our highway superintendent has recommended that we um, join with our uh, brethren municipalities. Um, Rhinebeck, Clinton, and Milan to have an additional attachment uh, to the uh, mini excavator that we share. Um, and we do as much as we can uh, to share equipment in the municipality. And this attachment, which uh, would cost uh, the four municipalities about 9000 and change, is a flail mower. Our share would be uh, $2,000. Is our resolution number 102 have it? 103. 103, thank you. Uh, our share would be. Just 
It's authorizing you to execute the agreement. The agreement, uh, well. It does not list what the cost is. It so does, it does here in the purchase, it's $2,404. It's in the IMA here yeah, in section not, 2. $2,404. And uh, the, the uh, lowest bid is from Westchester Tractor Inc. out of Brewster. And so that's 103, and I so move. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Uh, just one question. The sure. original shared was among just three towns, right, mm -hmm. for the mini excavator? Yeah. No, we had an interim draft. Teresa was working with the few communities to try to work out an agreement. And oh. it, for a while this summer, we had three parties. But then after people talked about it a little more, four of them wanted to. Yeah, so we have right? four on the mini excavator, and this is the uh, four something, four. Right. something for the flail. Yeah. Right. We only had three initially on the flail. That's what perhaps you were remembering. Yep. Okay. They're back. Yeah, okay. Out. <coughs> all right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're going to skip five and come back to that. Uh, number six is a resolution to approve. Uh, number four. We, sorry. Number four. You just did it. No, number four is authorizing the execution of an agreement for professional services for the water systems operator. Oh, That's resolution 104. We went out to bid uh, for our uh, water district operator, and the successful bid um, was for BRI, Environmental Services. They were the lowest responsible bidder. They are actually our current operator as well. And their bid was for $20,100. Per year. Per year. Monthly installments of 1680. And so this is a authorizing the execution of the agreement. And I so move. Is there second. a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We are back to our next item, <coughs> number six. It's resolution number 105. Dated October 23rd, 2019, authorizing the Town of Red Hook to award a contract for Judicial Court Shared Services Study. This is a shared services initiative. Um, it's a four municipality initiative. The Town of Rybeck took lead on this. It's funded by a Dutchess County Municipal Innovation Grant that uh, the municipalities were awarded or, or almost fully funded by that grant. Town of Rhinebeck was lead. Um, they went out to bid. Uh, we worked with uh, the county procurement specialist, and uh, the recommendation is to award the contract to La Berge Group. And this is a study for the folks at home. We are looking at how we might possibly um, share our facilities and our staffing. Um, keeping our courts separate um, because the revenue is separate, but how we might uh, work together to make it more efficient, uh, both in terms of cost and providing the best possible service uh, for our residents. So it's resolution number 105, authorizing the Town of Red Hook to award a contract for Judicial Court Shared Services Study. Um, it talks about how the town and village were awarded the grant um, how the town and village um, issued the uh, a Brian Beck, with the assistance of uh, Dutchess County, issued a request for a proposal. And the town of Brian Beck has coordinated a review of those proposals received in response to the RFP, including representatives of the town and village of Brian Beck and the town and village of Red Hook, and has recommended that La Parish Group be engaged to complete the project. And it's for a total lump sum of 39000 $390. And I offer the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, included in that is that we have, on a couple of occasions now, uh, the last that I mentioned was for the shared courts. Um, 
we have used uh, the procurement specialist that is employed by Dutchess County. We've used uh, her for particular um, bidding requirements for specific jobs, and all we are doing now is authorizing an, an extension of that intermunicipal agreement should we wish to do so again in the future. And this would be an extension for one additional one year period from November 1st, 2019 to October 31st, 2020. And there's no cost associated with it uh, until we decide to use those services. And this is resolution number 106. 106. Thank you very much. Extension of an existing IMA and ISO move. Is there second. a second? Second. Right. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, um, we're going to do some board reports now. And uh, Christine, if you would be kind enough to uh, give a summary of the planning board report. Okay. Uh, in October, the planning board met twice, once October 7th and once October 21st. For on October 7th, for a new business, they handled a certificate of appropriateness just outside of Tivoli for an addition to a residence in the historic overlay district that was um, approved. For, well, they did the Type 2 seeker resolution, waived the public hearing, and then they granted it. Um, in other business, they had a pre-application discussion with the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, uh, and that continues. They also did a Hamlet design review for the LWRP regarding the Empire State Trails um, and gave uh, feedback on that. They approved an extension request for a previously approved subdivision called the Preserves at Lakes Kill, and uh, they reviewed an application extension also from Rose Hill Farm um, and they are waiting still for health department approval so that extension was granted and there is also a uh, request from a project on Old Farm Road um, Rugies uh, asked for a 180 day extension request um, what are they looking for? They are looking for, they're working on highway improvements and entrance designs. Um, and that was granted a 90 day extension. And then they spent some time on the um, proposed Empire Trail state improvements and made four recommendations to New York State Department of Transportation. One is to remove the advanced pavement markings proposed up to the speeds, proposed speed tables on the road. Um, because they are proposed to be made with reflective paint, uh, paint, which will detract from the rural scenic character of the roadway. Two is to eliminate two speed tables and related signage as they do not appear to be necessary for safety. Three is to reduce the number of signs indicating the speed tables north and south of the entrance to Poets Walk Park. Uh, and fourth, to widen the existing Annandale path along the west side of County Route 103 on the Bard campus to accommodate bicycles and extend the path south to Montgomery Place on uh, the west side of the stone wall on that property. Thank you, Christine. I wonder if the folks at home want to know why the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome is in front of the town of Redham. Well, because they're in the town of Redham. That's right. <laughs> In the town of Red Hook. I think that um, the Empire State Trail part of the report, I think a lot of people will be interested in because people have been seeing, you know, some of the, the work, work that's happening. You know, and there's sort of that. like bits and bit pieces here and there about what's going on. But I suppose that's reflected in the minutes if people want to see how that was discussed by the planning board, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. There were info sessions early on, and then so continues right. the plan. And so for anybody that's not evolve. familiar with it, all the work that's been happening near the Kingston Rank on and near the Kingston Rankliffe Bridge is to um, get ready to have the Empire State Trail opened. And it, when it once it comes across the bridge, it will head north on um, Annandale Road, and that is why this discussion is happening. And there's a lot of um, 
planning and uh, reviewing options for how that trail could be accommodated along Annandale Road all the way north through Bard um, until the project or the proposed trail then goes through Tivoli Base to connect over to the village of Tivoli. Thank you very much, Christine. Bill, uh, the ZBA. A very brief ZBA the Z report. The ZBA didn't meet in October, and the next meeting is November 6th. Thank you. Okay. That's about as brief as I get. Yeah. Okay, Sarah, uh, Red Hook Monthly Dog Control Report. Okay, mm -hmm. this is for the month of September. Since we're still in October. We had zero dangerous dog complaints, bringing our yearly total to two. We had two loose dog calls, zero nuisance dogs, and one wildlife slash cat. Oh, it looks like it was a cat call. Uh, two dogs were found to be running at large. Those were the two dog complaints. And there was a severely injured cat found that unfortunately had to be put out of its misery. Very sad. But um, just a reminder to everybody, as Joel said, Keep your dogs, well, and all your pets really, but like on your own property and safely leashed where they need to be leashed for the health and safety of everybody, including themselves. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, Bill, you have a police department report? Yeah, the police department report, which uh, has been given to everybody on the town board, it cites the individual uh, incidents as the location. <clears throat> the total summary for September of 2019 was um, 88 incidents were reported to the Village of Red Police Department. They acted upon the 88. There were a total of four arrests made and a total of 59 tickets issued during the month of September. Okay. Harry, we have a water district report? Well, we do. The water district reported is very much like previous months or both. All of our regular monthly testing came back normal, um, which is good. There is ongoing maintenance uh, on various aspects of, of the system. Um, had, had some hydrant flushing um, and some, some, some repair, repair work in, in various uh, homes. Uh, I've replaced the roof bed on our storage tank. And we have um, hired our, our contractor who maintains the system for another <coughs> another year. Harry, you might want to mention that there is hybrid flushing scheduled for yeah. 11, 4, and 5. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that. I'm a little concerned about that. I mean, we're just out there promoting, making sure everybody has the availability information to go vote and then we're turning off the water for a while on them on election day it doesn't quite seem to be well, wise they, they to so they don't turn off the water. No, it's just dirty. It's just it's dirty. Well, and it's, only, it's, that's, it's that's only, equivalent to turning the water. Your tax dollars at work, Robert. <laughs> it, it's only going to be done the on, on the dead ends, yeah. <laughs> not on every hydrant. Well, I did I did see a couple of reports of, of uh, some brown water. Uh, well, well that, so. you know, and when they no. flood, no matter where it is, it pretty much creates a problem. I don't so. think it's going to affect people flooding. I Harry, um, would you uh, be kind enough to summarize the building and zoning report? Yes, it's a, as usual, it's a very extensive report. We must have a lot of activity. It, there were 26 um, permits issued, 11 inspections of uh, construction, and seven certificate of occupancy. That says that seven, seven uh, projects were completed. And, and the revenue generated for the month was $5,602. That, that would have been for the, well, the price of permits, etc. And it would probably be a good time to thank uh, uh, the folks uh, watching at home for your patience uh, with uh, the building and zoning department. Uh, as I think we've mentioned before, uh, Steve Cole, who has been with us for many, many years, had to be out uh, for uh, several months, and he's back. We're very excited that he's back, and um, you know we will have hopefully uh, you know.
know, operations will continue as they were before. So we thank you for your patience if you had to wait um, additional time. Because of that, we did our best to sort of cover the office in the meantime. Okay. Uh, next up, Disaster Preparedness Committee. Uh, the uh, local disaster uh, plan has incorporated changes as suggested by um, our attorney to the town um, and given to the committee for review. A PDF of the plan will be available soon for distribution. Um, they have a new member to the committee and that's the mayor of Tivoli, Joel Griffith. Um, we still haven't uh, found a solution to our 9-11 signage, but it's something that I hope we can do. Uh, very soon to focus on that. Um, as you know, there's a, a county law that's been in place for many years that requires you to have um, a reflective sign with your address um, installed in such a manner that emergency responders and others can uh, quickly and easily uh, find uh, the location of your house, um, not only from the road, but if it's down a long driveway. Um, to be able to discern which driveway to go down. And so uh, we are looking to figure out a way to assist in making sure that um, our emergency responders have that ability. Um, a tabletop drill is something that we think is very important um, before an actual uh, disaster occurs is to prepare for one and actually to uh, do a dress rehearsal, if you will. So um, there is one being planned in March of 2020. Um, the details will, will be forthcoming from that committee. Okay, Bill, you have another quick one, and that's your uh, intermunicipal working group. Yeah, the intermunicipal task force at weekly meetings in September and October continue to discuss the subject of short-term rentals. I do want to take a moment to introduce uh, and brief the town board on the public uh, meeting which is going to occur next Wednesday, October 30th, here in Town Hall at 7 o'clock. It's uh, been scheduled for a couple of months. It's actually a joint meeting between the Economic Development Committee and the uh, Intermunicipal Task Force of the Town of Red Oak. So the uh, presentation, it's like an informational meeting. Um, I, I actually will conduct it on behalf of the task force here at the, uh, in town hall. And <clears throat> what we propose to do is to introduce, of course, the subject of the task force, how it was established in, uh, by the town board in 2004 to act as an ongoing public forum to develop proposals for the board's consideration and potential action on important emerging issues involving planning and zoning. And um, one of the em emerging issues in the town of Red Hook in the past months has been the subject of short-term rentals. And they are defined as any structure where overnight accommodation is provided for transient occupancy for compensation for less than 30 days. So the emphasis is that we're not talking about long-term rentals or sharing houses or house swappings, but strictly short-term rentals, 30 days or less. The first part of the presentation will be to invite everyone in the uh, audience to say whatever they want about short-term rentals in the town of Red Oak, you know, whatever their opinion is on the subject, that we would record the comments and consider them and continue the dialogue at their future meetings. The second phase of the meeting would be for the task force to share some ideas of how STRs short-term rentals should be guided so that Red Oak can continue to protect its rural character and preserve its strong sense of community. And so the discussion then would be about current laws. We have a bed and breakfast law, which I'll explain. We have a lodging law, which I'll explain, that have to do with short-term rentals. But that actually, uh, there are no other opportunities for short-term rentals in the town of Red Oak, and the task force believes the opportunity for short-term rentals should be expanded in all residential districts. And we'll expa explain then uh, what they have uh, in mind. Um, and for the reason that Red Hook must provide for a balanced mix of short and long-term housing to ensure affordable housing and support tourism, giving visitors to the community a place to stay. And uh, more specifically, the task force believes that short-term rentals must be of the primary residence of the property owner 
They should be required to have an annual operating permit filed with the town building department and that they could be categorized as hosted where a property owner is present overnight with their guests or unhosted where a property owner is absent during the rental. And some may require planning board review depending upon the intensity um, of uh, their operation. So then we discuss where hosted SDRs would be allowed and where unhosted SDRs would be allowed and the subject of a one-time exemption which gets in a little bit technical but we'll describe that also. Um, and then the last part of the meeting will be again to invite the audience, the members uh, of the community who attend to give us the feedback, in other words their response to whatever the task force has been uh, uh, thinking and that we would record that and consider it and it be made a part of the, uh, of the record um, before um, any, any final you know, decision is made or uh, concluded about the subject of short-term rentals. So that's going to be the approach if anyone is concerned about what this public hearing is going to be like. I know some of the members of the board cannot attend because of conflicts, but we will be recording whatever comments are made and I'll be able to report back to the board. About that. It's not a public hearing, right? It's just a public meeting. No, right? it's not. It's, it's not a public hearing. It's just an informal, Great. informational meeting. Actually, that the EDC uh, invited the task force to hold with them, so that we can start the dialogue. Yeah, that's Did, all. It uh, has it gone out yet on the town? email list? It's about. Okay, great. Because yeah. that would be great to make sure people hear that. At the EDC meeting this morning, there was a, a lot of conversation about it. They're encouraging people to come. Uh, the bottom line. Yeah. What was it? Um, oh, you may also consider in the email, if you have a, a draft report or an outline or something, if people can't attend, you could put it on the website and say, like, you know, Sending comments before such a date or something, if you can't, you know, if you want to, you know. Well, I think the idea is there. not to share, is not to, you know, say this is what what's happening. It's mm -hmm. more to, to start a dialogue then. Yeah, sure. It'll, it'll be I'm going just on. Give a way to include people who can't be there, or maybe it's yeah. that you well, it can be would sent do a out summary, yeah, right. maybe a summary of right. the meeting or something. Right. You know, but in some way to give people an option. Right. Again, not like a public hearing, but in the same way as a public hearing in the sense that like usually give some way for people to give their opinion besides showing up in person like these kind of people did today. There's going to be a series of for me because this is, you know, if you look at other communities, they've taken their time with this because it's kind of new. Yeah, it's very complicated. Yeah. They're at a sensitive angles. issue. Yeah. Sure. So we'll want to get as much input as possible, but yeah, it would be nice to have like a report of what, what's discussed and we will have share it. the public's comments and then we can you put all of that, that up there like an info session minutes, if you will. Speaking of minutes, Harry, yes. would you be kind enough well, to summarize John's uh, <laughs> Recreation uh, Commission? Yeah, well, uh, he, he's uh, summarized the Summer Rec program, which went, went very well. Yeah. Um, the playground is, uh, is mostly completed, uh, with, with, which probably will not be finished till, till the spring, until we get the delivery of what the additional things we need. Um, the pickleball courts are in, operational. We have created the court rules so, along with the, some of advisors who are experts at pickleball. Um, our, our, our John is proposing lighting for the pickleball courts when we take the, the existing poles down out there and move them over to the court area. Um, we're doing some, we're going to do some work on the uh, skate park, uh, not the, the skate park, the, the uh, no, yeah, I guess it is the skate, park. the skate park, but, yeah, yeah the, the, uh, the, 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 the kids, and some of the kids are young adults, who go, go out there with, in the skate park right, regularly, and they have some requests, so John has been looking into that. But Harry, I think the important part to add to that um, the entire skate park surface was repaired, resurfaced, and color-coded with one coat of the two required. Sadly, skaters ignored the closed signs and the locked gates and all the caution tape and skated on the surface before it was fully cured. And so they had to come and do repair work before they could reapply the first color coat. 
Um, so this kind of thing is really unfortunate because we are, you know, as, as evidenced by John's very long reports every month, putting a lot of time and thought as well as money and resources into these projects. And so I just want to say that publicly. Um, you know, that's just very disappointing. I think John goes out of his way to make sure that he's very safe when there's an ongoing project there so that people are really clear on where to walk, where to, you know, play and all that stuff. And if people could please be respectful of those areas, that would be that would be appreciated. Um, there's a note here that John does John need is he looking for approval of his new pickleball court rules? He he uh, sent those he around sends, to the He sent some drafts, but case. we haven't had a chance to review. Okay. Them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I this is his this is what he sends to his commission. Right. So when it says right. If they can be approved tonight, right. I think he meant at his meeting. Okay, I just didn't know if they were looking for, for your approval. No, not for us, I don't think. I was at that meeting and they did approve them. Yeah, they did already approve them. That, the okay. commission usually approves that signage language. So, And we're all on those those emails, so if you think we should be approving them, I you, haven't had you always have. To right. them. So I you might want to mention that to yeah. him because I think sometimes he buries his request for our opinions mm -hmm. in those emails. Mm -hmm. And if I think my opinion, of course, I'm an outgoing town board member. If he has a specific request to us as the town board, separate he may email. want to send a separate email that says specifically town board input requested. Because there's a lot of rec emails, and I can understand why people yeah. might kind of not read them, you know, right before the meeting if he's trying to approve them. And, can I just mention, I'm sorry, Karen, that I'm butting in so much, but one more thing, which is I think a lot of people who use the rec park have been wondering about the bench specifically because their absence is really notable with the big new playground um, that's been put in and obviously a lot of traffic there uh, in terms of people uh, playing. So there will be lots of benches in the fu near future. Some of the old benches are being primed, repainted, you know, fixed up, and then we have new benches going in, um, but we, it looks like John has decided that that will be done once the blacktop pathways have been completed, um, and it's going to require some special equipment because the holes to dig in the bench legs, if you will, uh, are, are very deep. Um, and there's cement that has to be poured. It's very complicated. He literally, and he has to like cut through tree roots sometimes, depending on where the trees are. It's just, you know, of course they try not to cut through roots, but when they have to, they have to. Anyway, so it's really complicated, and uh, but they will be going in. So I don't want anybody to think we've like forgotten that benches should right. be there. Yeah, there's going to be new in. new fencing, new pathways. Uh, turtle will return, right? Um, and uh, more chips coming for the playground, yeah, for sure. The the, uh, the, the, uh, the high school kids uh, have been have been uh, operating going from the class over there. They're using the tennis courts. They have a biking program that I think starts there, but but uh, that goes beyond the park park parameters. And and the girls intercollegiate tennis team. From the high school is is working there. Ball baseball is going on. Girls softball. We had a bee problem in the dugout. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> that was taken care of. Um, we've done skate park improvements. Uh, that's that's the noisy stuff with the the uh, skateboard. Uh, so uh, um, and that that's underway. We've met met with the. With the, the young people who are, who are no longer are, are beyond adolescent age, it seems to me, who uh, have, have desires in the skate park for different equipment, and, and we are probably be able to do some of that. We're going to build new dugouts for the baseball fields in, in the spring. Okay. Good. And uh, just for the folks at home, you've seen probably the construction begin on the west side of Linden Avenue. Um, what you're looking at, if you're looking at where the equipment is, is the beginning of the trailhead parking for the trail system. Um, the uh, trailhead will reach uh, the parcels uh, that are being acquired by Winnicky Land Trust, and we will be working with them to obtain a trail easement over those 336 acres. 
It's essentially the remainder of the Linden Acres subdivision will be permanently protected uh, with the exception of uh, passive recreation. And so uh, that's what you're seeing over there. And next up is Sarah to report tree preservation. Okay, um, I'm going to jump in if I'm not saying up. But here's what was discussed at the October 15th meeting. They were very busy. Um, they, did a, uh, they did a cleanup of a portion of the nature trail at Mill Road School, and they're scheduling a second cleanup for October 26th. They did their fall tree order, and it will be delivered next, no, November 6th or 7th. Um, the trees will be planted on the south side of the west end of Pitcher Lane. It's looking really good, by the way. Um, we're thinking about, we're thinking strongly of going after a grant out of the DEC for urban forestry, which includes places like us, even though we don't think of ourselves as urban, mm -hmm. but uh, we fit into the category. Uh, hopefully some kind of planting, maybe in Rat Park West. Um, so the tree committee is going to be giving input to the town. I think the town engineer is going to be coordinating that application. Um, they're going to continue pruning in Red Church Cemetery this fall and winter. And uh, they'll be ordering books for next year's arbitrary program. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very Special much. consideration and thanks to Hop for doing all the mowing around the new trees. Okay. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I bet. It took me three hours. Thank you. Okay, a very brief Senior Services Committee report. Uh, they're actively recruiting new members. And in fact, I noticed we don't have it in our packet, but Johanna Moore uh, sent in a letter of interest. And if you uh, all are willing, I'd like to go ahead tonight and appoint her to the Senior Services uh, Committee. We all know her and her contributions over the years. Um, and they are looking for uh, committee members. So. Shall we do that? Yes. So move. Second. Aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right. They meet at 10 a.m. in the conference room at Town Hall on the last Wednesday of the month. Folks, uh, is there any other public comment? At this time, we're going to be entertaining a motion to go into attorney client. Like Two public comments. Two public comments. Please go ahead, Teresa. Um, I would like to come to the mic so we'll hear you. Oh, sure. Um, first of all, the highway department is looking for part-time wingmen, wing women positions, and you can fill out an application online and sign in. Um, secondly, I would like to request in the future that um, the way the reports are on the agenda are alphabetical and the reports are first, and the committee reports are second, the department reports. So if you could put the highway department back in that alphabetical order. So if I have a, a, a report or a comment to make that I don't have to wait until the very end. Um, well, I've been asked the past couple of meetings at the very end of the meeting instead of in that order. So I respect for the request that we go back to that order if it's possible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Linda? Uh, we put a lot of time and money into our rec park, and it's quite disturbing to me that we try and improve it, and kids are getting in there and messing it up. Is it possible to get some working video cameras of some sort so that we have then a record of what's going on and catch them? Just like what's going on with the dogs, catch them. Let's do our job. Yeah. Uh, we are in the process of looking into that, Linda. We we actually are, you know, trying to get some communication lines over there to the rec park so that we can in fact do that. We wouldn't utilize the video if we were to agree to put video into our rec park, unless and until there was an incident and we needed that video to document that incident. Yes, we are. We are seriously being forced to look at that. Something that we never thought we would have to do. But we're already ahead. In fact, Dennis is over here, and he's been in touch with the phone company and the cable company, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, on that uh, uh, conclusion.
conclusion of public comment um, at this time, I would like to make a motion that we go into attorney client. And first, thank you all for joining us this evening, uh, both here and at home. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. 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 Thanks.